So we got this question from our buddy Fishing2424. He's 20 years old. He just moved out of his parents' home for the very first time. He's in a city all, his, all by himself. No, knows nobody. He's all on his own. Very first time he's had this call to adventure. Very important, very interesting. Very potent time in every man's life. But he's feeling alone and depressed because he can't seem to make friends. He can't seem to cross this threshold by which he would receive love and compassion, friendship, companionship with other people in his, in his new city. He tries his best, but he keeps bumping up against this resistance. He's sad, lonely, misses his home, but doesn't want to go back because it, in a way it's a, it's a sign of failure. And you're right, in, in a way it is. What does he do? What I'm going to invite you to look at today is some of Joseph Campbell's work. Joseph Campbell is an, was an incredible man who studied the depths of human consciousness that was shared to us through generations and generations, through cultures and cultures of the world since recorded history of all the myths and rituals that helped us guide our lives. We've totally detached from these, you know, we see them as untrue or, um, you know, a lot of them are religions, a lot of them are, are, are ancient stories told by Native Americans and Aboriginals and, you know, we're too sophisticated now to like be bothered with any of those talking birds and shit. And what we miss is what Joseph Campbell tries to share with us is that we've used these stories up until now. We're really developing a new story. That's essentially what mankind is doing. And we're just not there yet. So we're without myth. We're, we're without stories. But he studied these stories and he shares them with us through his work. And, uh, and, and shows us how the symbols used by our ancestors were really designed. These stories were really designed to, to help us navigate the world that we live in. And there's one concept that he, he really delves deeply into in, in many of his books, and it's what I want you to, to look at. And he calls it the hero's journey. It's the same story that's told in Star Wars about Luke, Luke uh, Skywalker. In fact, uh, Lucas, George Lucas, was highly influenced by Campbell's work and this hero's journey. I also have a book here called The Hero with a Thousand Faces. And, uh, and in this, he talks about all the mythical creatures, all the guys, you know. He talks about Jesus and he talks about um, Luke Skywalker, you know, all the guys that we tell stories about that support us in our journey. Now, this, now back to you. Th this hero's journey that you're going on is one that men have always gone through. And you're in the beginning stages of it. What we've done up until this point was... There were create, we've created rites of passages, but they no longer exist. We just don't use them anymore. You know, unless you're, if you're Jewish, you might have like a bar mitzvah, bar mitzvah. Um, if, you're, if you're Catholic, they still retain the tradition of, um, uh, I, I don't remember, but where you get your, your communion, holy communion. You know, I did it. I was raised as a Catholic. These are rituals that were used, and they were far more potent back in the day. It wasn't just like, hey, recite these words and get this bread. Now you're a man. There was, there was a lot more to it, but we, you know, we dumbed down everything, you know, in our culture now. Nothing's that as potent as it once was. But anyway, th we don't have that anymore, and, and, and our young men suffer. You're suffering right now because you don't have that. But what you do have are the stories told by our ancestors and the hero's journey that Joseph Campbell documented for us in his work. Please go look it up. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to share with you the, the, the stages in the hero's journey. Because you're going to notice that you're, you're at a very critical junction in your journey. I experienced this. I was lucky enough to, to find, to make my way through it. A lot of men don't. I, don't, I think most of us don't. I look at a lot of grown men and I'm like, you know you're 35, you're 50, but you're still in the beginning stages of your hero's journey. You're not a hero yet. You're still, you're still a boy in an old body because they, at the junction at which you are right now, they faltered. You know, scary out there. Nobody wants, nobody wants to delve into their fears. 
So uh, if you even look up their, gra their diagrams of jo Joseph Campbell's work, especially on the hero's journey, and, um, and the very first step is the ordinary world. This is the world of dependency and or on your parents. You know, you're told what to do, how to do it, and you're very dependent on your parents in, in the home, the tribe, if you will. Then step two is when you turn about, in, in, in the ancient days, maybe 14 years old, but today, you know, 20, 21 years old, there's a call to action. You're called away from the womb of the home or the tribe. Every man feels it. Every man is encouraged in some way to move out of the womb. You, you know, there, was, they, there were very ritualistic ways that our ancestors would go about this. You know, they were very symbolic in many of the things that they did. I, I remember reading about a, uh, an African tribe to this day that when a boy turns 14, he's ritualistically ripped, or they, they, actually not exactly 14, but they wait till he starts exhibiting manly-like behavior. You know, he starts acting like, you know, he thinks he's a man. They, they, they create this drama. And, all, you know, it's a conspiracy against the kids. So all the men in the village and the women, they know what's going on. And they come in, and the men come in with big, ugly masks. And they tear the, you know, they scare the boy, and they tear him away from his mother. And they take him out into the jungle. And for a few days, he's out there with just the men. And they put him through several tests. You know, I think one of them is like, you've got to kill some sort of an animal. You know, kill this lion or something um, and there's several different things that they make him go through because he, now he's becoming a man he had to be stripped from the womb ritualistically metaphorically and forced to become a fucking man we don't do shit like this anymore right you go to college what is that get drunk and, and pass tests that are you know completely abstract and have nothing to do with the reality of the world right and then get in debt now you're a slave to the fucking machine you're a slave to the empire right that's the dark side that's Darth Vader right there. You know, you don't, Luke Skywalker doesn't even get out of the fucking, get out of his jet before he's snatched up by the Empire, right? That's what they, that's debt. That's why they want to get you in debt so quickly. The Empire wants, wants you. The Empire is one form of the challenges that you meet when you're out in the world. And that's, that's the system, if you will. That's the government. That's civilization. Anyway, very long video, I'm ranting. Now, there's a critical junction when there's that call to action. First, you're very excited about that call to action, but then there's a point of refusal. There is a refusal of the call. I would like to say, I, just in my experience in dealing with, with many young men and, and adult men, that perhaps 50%, maybe more, refuse the call because it's just too fucking scary. See, what you're experiencing right now is, is the fear of being alone. We all have different fears. It manifests, it shows up in different ways. Some of us, some, some of us it's, it's the excitement of freedom, and then they go and self-sabotage. Party, drinks, too much friends. That's their challenge. They, and that's a refusal of the call also, because the call really is designed to bring you, to, to, to bring you full circle to maturity. So when you're an old man, you, you, you've gained heroship. And if you, if you, if you treat that fearfully, or you're too flippant with it, you fuck the whole thing up. You know, you end up a 50-year-old man who still parties and, and, and uh, looks at women like he was when he was 25, and it's like, dude, you're, you're an old man, you're getting drunk and talking to, to teenagers, like, that's fucked up and weird. Or, they're, they're very conservative and very uh, afraid to express themselves, and you know, they're just, they're yes men. They go to their job, they do what they're told. Then they get wives that tell them what to do. And they live their life just, you know, yes menning never really fully experiencing themselves. You don't want either one of those. You want that middle path where you own yourself. So that refusal of the call is your first challenge and you're there right now. What are you gonna do? Are you going to go home, cry your way back home, be a little boy, right? Most of, a lot of us do that now. They go to college and they come back home because they're broke. No, you're not broke, you're just too fucking scared to go do something. Or you, you sort of numb yourself with activity. You know, and that activity could be, it's always dysfunctional, but it could be seen as, as uh, you know, society sees it as something good. Well, look at him, he's going and uh, he's, he's become very neurotic in his drive towards earning riches. Or he's completely detached and, uh, and, and like drinks all day long now and plays video games. What you're, what you're doing in both cases is you're, you're refusing the call to look at what's out there. And those are monsters, they're demons. 
right? They're your demons. You gotta look at your fear. You gotta look at the, the reason why you're trying to escape. Either run back home, get into drugs, or throw yourself into work. Very interesting stuff. Um, the next step, if he, if he does continue, is he meets a mentor. Right? If he decides, I'm fucking doing this, I'm going hardcore, this is my calling, these are my fears, and I'm looking them dead in the eyes, he's going to meet a mentor. Happens every single time. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Right? Every single time we meet a mentor. And that mentor shares ideas with you because he's been there before. And he's giving you some ideas and encouragement about how to get through this shit. He steers your, your consciousness just a little bit. You've got to make your own choices. You've got to make your own mistakes. You've got to receive your own blessings. But you will find that if you go on your way, you're going to meet men that are, that are going to be very willing to support you on your way. And then there's a crossing, crossing of the threshold. Now you're really in it. You're in the thick of it. Number six, tests, allies, and enemies. Now you're really in the world. This is where, you know, um, Luke Skywalker starts meeting, like, uh, who, who's the guy? You know, he meets the, 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 the queen, the princess, Leia, and he meets uh, the other dude, the, you know, the cowboy dude. He meets all types of interesting people. Then he has tests, you know, there are bad guys that are coming after him. You know, the, there's challenges to see if he's mentally tough enough. No. Oh, you know, and then also he meets Yoda. You know, Yoda. Yoda is his uh, one of his mentors also. You know, these wise dudes along the way. Ordeal, death, and rebirth. You go through the big challenge, right? And that's and that's your purpose in life. The ordeal, death, rebirth, reward. Seizing the sword, you became a fucking man. It takes a long time. Most of us stop at that second one. I'm on number nine now. The road back, that means you've learned some things, you've gained, you, you, you've been granted that sword. You, you come back, and now you become, they say you return with the elixir. You come with some sort of message, you come with some sort of gift that you want to share with the world now, that you've been through that hero's journey. Fascinating, fascinating stuff. So, of course, this is a long-winded video, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, it's deeply re-involved with a lot of Joseph Campbell's work and so I'm excited about it and I want to share that with you. But my friend, listen, you're in a tough place but you're not alone. Every single walking man dead, alive and in the future will be posed with the hero's journey. There's a call to adventure and there's, and which is number one and number two. Or are you going to go on it or are you going to refuse? You refuse, you will have to be rebirth again. You'd have to you'll you have to come back and do this shit all over again. You'll be a, you'll be a baby in a in an old man's body, which many people are. I'm grateful for you. This is good. See your fears for what they are. Their challenges. Seek out that mentorship. It could come in the form of videos. In the form of books. Brian Tracy was a big mentor to me. I never met the man in, in my life. Ralph Waldo Emerson died 100 years ago, over 100 years ago. Great mentor to me. And then there were men that, that, I had men that came to my gym when I was going through difficult times. These were guys who were my clients. They saw what I was doing and they offered me support and advice. And then you just gotta go and fucking do it. Good luck, my friend.